watch. That one, so Chance, you're telling me it's west of Highway 30. Yes, Jonathan, it's west of Highway 30, the, the, the column that we're looking at right now. Very good. Because when I look at radar, there's two areas of circulation, and there's one back to your east, and Buck King, he'll probably see that. He's a little bit further back to the west. Jeremy's to the southeast, but, uh, I mean. You me, I'll tell you. Hey guys, just so you all know, so guys, you guys are live on the air right now, so uh, we have your phone potted up, so be uh, be mindful of that right now. But again, this is this is getting pretty close right now. This is getting way too close. And at National Weather Service, if you're listening to us right now, this is going to be just uh, we have it appears to be two areas of circulation within this. But this is Chance Cold Iron. He is near Dempsey right now. But we continue to watch the stream, and with every lightning flash, we see that lowering coming down. We know the tornado threat continues. Across Western Oklahoma, Storm Prediction Center kept the uh, Storm Prediction Center kept the tornado watch in effect until midnight, and there's a reason because the tornado threat will continue until midnight. So here is that lowering that we have associated with this storm right here, and uh, certainly, if I am living anywhere near Dempsey right now, even just outside the uh, the city limits, I am going into my tornado shelter immediately. This tornado warning continues until at least 9:15. We'll have to see if it goes a little farther than that. But right now, looking five miles now northeast of Sweetwater, the track, the speed has changed a little bit, down to 15 miles per hour, down to 15 miles per hour. Jeremy Carter, we have you live on the phone right now. Jeremy, what are you seeing? Well, I'm looking at the uh, eastern most, most area of rotation right now. I'm um, two miles east of, east of Sweetwater and then back three miles to the north. And I can see both of the areas of rotation. I can't see anything on the ground, Damon. Back to you. Okay, well, certainly uh, this time of the evening it can get pretty dangerous. Uh, but th this storm is rotating. There's a lot of areas of uh, rotation within this storm. That we uh, that we need to watch pretty closely. Again, this coming in from Jeremy Carter. But what we're noticing here, so we have here's one area of rotation. This is outside of Dempsey. That Chance Cold Iron was looking at this area of rotation. So it appears we have two areas of rotation at least. Because you know what? Here's another one. As we mentioned a while ago, we're treating the, treating this like the potential for about three tornadoes to develop. Three tornadoes all within a, an area that's not that wide, a very serious situation. So we're now two miles away from this storm moving over Dempsey. Dempsey, you are in your tornado shelter. You're in the innermost room of your house away from windows as this is continuing to move up to the northeast. So, uh, Buck King, I want to bring you in now. Buck, where are you and what are you seeing? Damon, you know, I'm about three miles east of this lowering that Chance and Jeremy are talking about. It is close to the ground. I don't see anything on the ground at this point, but it's really trying to spin up. Back to you guys. Yeah, certainly. Uh, this is the time of the night where you have to watch very closely because the tornado threat doesn't always have to be at 3, 4, and 5 o'clock in the afternoon when the sun is shining. It continues even as we go into the evening hours, and that's what we're seeing. So this picture coming in from Buck, and Buck is actually looking – from the east, he's going looking out to the west. So uh, we're getting a different vantage point of this storm, and every vantage point is helpful because everyone sees something different. So uh, what we're going to do here is continue to look at his stream, but the rotation within this, it's still going to be uh, strong enough, and we'll have to see what happens with this tornado warning over the next few minutes. Looks like a lot of wind farms are nearby. All those lights that you see right there, those are going to be those red flashing lights on top of the windmills out across western Oklahoma. Let's show uh, First Alert Doppler 3D. First Alert Doppler 3D, that rotation is in between the community of Dempsey and Highway 30. In between Dempsey and Highway 30, a couple other areas of rotation now west. Of high 30. Okay, so new tornado warning is now being issued. We just got this coming in from, uh, looks like a brand new tornado warning being issued. They're going to extend this tornado warning. So, brand new now, new tornado warning coming in. This is going to replace the one that was just issued that was going to expire at 9 15. This is what happens is we get these tornado warnings. Get them out for about 30, 45 minutes. Then we have to see what happens to the storm. The threat is still very much there for this rotation and uh, the tornado potential to continue. And so as we look outside, because I imagine what we're going to see here is Cheyenne. You're next to, uh, to be added in this tornado warning. So 917 Dempsey, that's any minute now, Cheyenne, right near 10 o'clock with this tornado warning and this rotation, which we can see it right here as it continues to move up to the northeast. Jonathan, what do you see? Uh, well, I'm almost thinking that 
so they're issuing the warning. Beckham, Roger Mills. I, I, there's a new warning. That's for the circulation. There's two areas that are that need to be warned. The one coming to Dempsey, the one west southwest of Sweetwater. That's the new one. So the first warning was for. It, let me highlight it here. Was for that area of circulation that we've been watching. That's east of Highway 30 coming into Dempsey. New warning now for the west of Sweetwater. There it is. Just let me. It's going to be for this area right here. Chance is right here. He's looking back to the southwest. That was the cone that he saw. That, mm -hmm. that was the area of circulation he was looking at. Let me show you where our chasers are at right now. So again, there's Buck. He's right there. Jeremy Carter right there. Chance Cold Iron. Chance is looking back to the southwest. This is where he saw that cone right in there. So two areas of circulation. And again, the. The, the better area circulation is the first one going over towards Dempsey, mm -hmm. but visually what we saw with Chance, the cone back to the southwest, now the secondary circulation to the west of Sweetwater, that cone was much more visual yes. than what we saw with that first circulation. And this goes exactly with what, with what we've been saying throughout the evening. And Jonathan, one thing I'm noticing, this tornado warning is the largest tornado warning that we have seen, I think, all day. Anywhere in the nation. I mean, that includes Texas, that includes anywhere because look how large this tornado warning is. As a matter of fact, Jonathan, you, yeah, look at this. So, this was our first tornado warning. This new one is much, much larger across, uh, across Roger Mills and Beckham County. This is until 10 o'clock. So, now we're going to include many more communities in the path of this. So, now we're talking about Hammond, Carpenter, Herring, Cheyenne, Rose Hill, Berlin, south of Roll. Uh, route 283, and this is going to be for. Uh, we're getting a lot of areas of rotation now within this. This, this is going to be. This is what we're going to have to really keep up with now is each area of rotation because right now, if we look at all the inflow areas, there are going to be a lot of them. So, as we mentioned, possibly three tornadoes could be trying to develop out of this line right here. This is going to be one tornado warning west of Sweetwater. Once again, Sweetwater still dealing with this. Here's going to be the another tornado warning over Dempsey. And right now, I am concentrating on Dempsey since this tornado right here certainly could be moving right over a community. This right here, Dempsey, you are headed into your tornado shelter immediately if you have not done so already with this storm. We still see that red and that green wrapped up, and I am, uh, I am quickly going into my shelter. If I do not have a shelter, you are going in to the innermost room of your house. It even here may even be another area of rotation. Not every tornado is going to be a large stovepipe tornado like we had earlier in the evening down near Sayer. Some of these are going to be roping, uh, kind of roping and snaking their way through the sky. But you can see, Jonathan, put that back up. These are going to be the shear. This is going to be the shear tracks that we have. So we can see where basically the rotation is. It's basically just skipping across as is very typical out here. And uh, Jonathan, right there, that looks like maybe some of the strongest rotation uh, that we had earlier when I just saw that red. So this, this tornado threat continues and uh, even more impressive is just how much larger this new tornado warning is, Jonathan. And more than likely, that's going to be because of the fact that this, this entire line is going to be serious from point A to point B. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, again, multiple areas of circulation. That first one we were following, which was northwest of Sweetwater, now going into Dempsey. By what we're seeing on radar, that is by far the, the largest area of rotation with multiple embedded areas of rotation back to the southwest. If we can get either Chance or Corey or, uh, or Jeremy, or actually not Corey, Chance or Jeremy are back in the control room here. Whoever is ready, they can give us an idea. Where, you know, we see them on radar, but they can also tell us you know, what we have because we're monitoring their streams. Not a lot of lightning. I don't see a lot in the way of a structure with the storm. Right now, looks like we're looking at Chance's stream. Chance Cold Iron, we're looking at your stream right now. We see on radar. What do you see with the part of the storm that you're looking at right now? Well, Jonathan, we're right up underneath it. We actually drove through the circulation a few minutes ago and had a little wind shift there. I'm trying to get east so I can get a better view. I'll get back to you in just a minute. All right, so Chance, at this time, I know, I know you're probably in a little bit of rain. I can see that in the windshield. It's rain wrapped. When you're, I know you're trying to get in a little bit better position, but from where you're at, can you, can you see the wall cloud? Can you see, is there a cone at all, or are you in a position where you just can't see it right now because there's so much rain? I cleaned the wall cloud over my back left shoulder as I'm traveling east. I'm going to get up here and uh, swing the truck around here in about another mile. Okay. 
So again, Chance, we have you on GPS. You're going to be about a mile southeast of the community of Dempsey. It looks like you're on uh, County Road 1040 and coming up to the intersection of uh, 12, right at that intersection. And that's going to be one mile to the southeast of Dempsey. So you got a little bit of your right, your, the area of circulation, and when we look at velocities here, uh, it's going to be right, right back to your southwest or northwest by a couple of miles. So um, we're going to overlay where all our chasers are at. You can see Chance, Jeremy's on the southern flank, keeping an eye back to the west and into the northwest. Chance is on the leading edge there. We also have Mr. King. He's about three miles northeast okay. of Chance right now. Let's go back over to the, the, the velocities, multiple areas of rotation, one back to the southwest of Sweetwater. And the, the other area over Dempsey, Damon, I'll say this, the gate-to-gate -gate shear with that one spot may have come down a little bit. The speeds in it have come up, but the gate-to-gate -gate shear may not be as tight. Well, and that's, that's going to be a concern that we're watching pretty closely right now. Uh, is, is what these storms want to do now that we're in a, a different time of the day here. As we mentioned, the tornado threat still continues. At some point, we begin to see the tornado risk begin to go down, but we can't tell just when that, will, that point will be until we start watching it happen on radar. And then we have to at least continue to watch it for at least 15, 20, 30 minutes because these storms can sometimes cycle. You know, at one point, the velocity did not look all that great on this storm now, and then it picked up, and then it's kind of weakening right now. We're looking over the last uh, 30 to 45 minutes with the velocity within the storm, but still, the, uh, the potential is still there for this storm to produce a tornado. Jeremy Carter, we have you live on the phone right now. What are you seeing? Well, I'm headed back to the rotation west of Sweetwater, and it uh, looks to me like it's kind of trying to tighten up a little bit, Damon. Yeah, and this is, you know what, that, that's a very good report, and we need those kind of reports because we get to see exactly, uh, we, we, we have to hear exactly what you're seeing. And so when you say that that rotation is tightening up, we see it on radar, but we can also see it from your picture whenever we get the lightning to strike here. So we're looking into the distance here. Jeremy Carter just a few miles away from the storm, waiting for the lightning to come in here. And then we can see that lowering associated with this storm. And that's exactly why we continue with this uh, tornado warning for western Oklahoma near the community of Sweetwater. So looks like Jeremy is, uh, is coming into town. Looks like he's coming into town right now. Probably going to be uh, let's see here, uh, just what, a couple hundred yards outside of town. So uh, lights are there. Lights are still on. That's good in the sense that we know that at least the, the winds and the tornado has not at least uh, knocked out electricity. So want to go over to First Alert Doppler 3D and show where we're seeing this rotation. We are now just west of Sweetwater, right along Highway 152. That takes you into town. Here's going to be that inflow notch where the winds are rushing in. That's when you see that green kind of sneaking its way inside of the storm because the winds are basically trying to push it in there. So there is going to be one area of rotation, possibly even starting to see at least another area of rotation as well west of Highway 30. But this tornado warning continues, and this time of the night, we have to treat these warnings, these Doppler radar indicated tornado warnings, very seriously as the, uh, the daylight is gone. And so our ability to see just uh, well into the, into the distance and see exactly what these wall clouds look like, whether they are tight or ragged, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to do unless you get lightning. But as Jeremy mentioned, he's still seeing that rotation. Hey, let's put up uh, Weather 8 real quick. Weather 8, Jeremy's coming up on the storm. And when the, and when the lightning flashes there, uh, we can and see what appears to be maybe a little bit of a lowering. So uh, Jeremy is now looking right into the storm, right into the storm. And as we look at his image here, you can see right into the distance. What's this coming in right now? We'll have to look at that in a second. But uh, looks like this is going to be that lowering associated with this storm. So you can see lots of lowerings. And this does not have to be a large cone tornado with this. I mean, we can get even a what looks like a, an elephant trunk that tries to sneak out of this. But you see lots of, lots of areas of lowerings within this storm. And Jeremy is now headed right into the storm, where not only do we have that threat for tornadoes, but we also have the potential for some very large damaging hail. So uh, we continue this tornado warning for Beckham and Roger Mills County until 10 o'clock. It is currently 922. These storms, look like we have two tornado warnings. So, all right, so this, this is something interesting right here. So, uh, we have one tornado warning, area of rotation, six miles southwest of Cheyenne. 
another area of rotation two miles west of Sweetwater. This is exactly what we've been mentioning earlier, two areas of rotation. Here is area number one. Here's going to be area number two. Both of them are moving up to the northeast, and the speed's going to be here at 35 miles per hour. So uh, the speed has picked up a little bit more so since we have last looked. At one point, the warning was for 15 and 20 mile per hour uh, track up to the northeast. Now it's 35 miles per hour. So up to the northeast we go. This is going to be area of rotation number one, Cheyenne, 936, Strong City, 946, and Herring at 949. This is going to be the, for the first one. But just like storms can move over the same area, tornado warnings can move over the same area back to back. And that's exactly what we're seeing here is the fact that we could have two tornadoes impact the same communities twice. So. Uh, the second area of rotation, Sweetwater 924, Dempsey 938, Grimes 939, Rose Hill 945, and Cheyenne at 956. Jonathan, it's not often that we see two tornado warnings basically for the same community, but that just goes to show the seriousness of the situation that we have ongoing now this time of the night. It's, it's almost, it's multicellular, but embedded as two twin supercells. Mm -hmm. So you can almost see two inflow notches, two hooks. These are two supercellular storms that are just kind of connected, like uh, twin supercells. Mm -hmm. It's not really multicellular. So inflow notch number one, that's area circulation. Inflow notch number two, so potential two tornado warnings. Again, one for Sweetwater, the other one to the southwest of Cheyenne. So again, absolutely. We put, you know, I put the storm track on the first one for uh, the area circulation just to the southwest of Cheyenne. We have a storm track coming into Cheyenne, 937. Remember that number. I'm going to do another storm track for the area circulation near Sweetwater coming back into Cheyenne, 953. So you're yeah. going to have potentially two areas of circulation, two tornadoes mm -hmm. tracking through Cheyenne at two different times. Cheyenne, listen up. Do not get out of your shelter after the first one moves. You yeah. got to ride this out for long haul. This, this is going to be for at least another half hour. Absolutely, Jonathan. Chance Cold Iron, want to bring you in right now because Chance, I know we've been looking at your pictures right now. Uh, Chance, exactly what are you seeing? Hey, Damon, I'm on County Road 14, three miles east of Dempsey, and there's nothing really tight right now. We've seen a couple of areas of lowering, as I can't really confirm if the rotating, the lightning's come down a lot from the earlier shots. But uh, as of now, I would just I would, I'm going to stay right here with it and track it off up towards Cheyenne as uh, the storm moves that direction. Back to you. All right, Chance, and be careful because we have two areas of rotation right now, so you're going to get uh, two at least uh, two tracks right overhead. But there is going to be that rotation, that wall cloud within this storm. And as we saw earlier, wall cloud is always a very, very good sign that this storm is spinning and it could be trying to lower itself down. So the threat for tornadoes continues until 10 o'clock at least. That is going to be at least uh, until about 10 o'clock as these storms continue to move into an area that still supports tornadoes. I want to go over to First Alert Doppler 3D because uh, when we look here, here's going to be inflow right here within this storm. The winds are just rushing right into here and then they're trying to basically hook out. So you can see now just over Dempsey, or just over the community of Dempsey, this is going to be one area of rotation. Also, the potential for some large hail up the golf ball size. We're going to see it just north of Dempsey within this storm. Buck and Chance are going to be staring right into this storm. Again, looking right into this storm. And uh, we're going to have to, if we can get up that three box and at least try to look at their pictures every now and then, because I know that they're going to be seeing. Uh, as Chance mentioned, a lowering. And then here's going to be the other lowering. Jeremy is going to be just west. Now, Sweetwater, we mentioned earlier, uh, is Sweetwater, just because that one area of rotation was going to stay north, didn't mean that we could put our guard down. And now everything is happening the way that we expected it to. And that is this hook is now getting to move right over Sweetwater. And we're going to have to watch Jeremy Carter's picture very closely. Again, watching his picture very closely. He's going to be down here in the bottom left. And so when we get those lightning flashes, uh, we're going to have to see just how low of a wall cloud we have coming in here. Jonathan. Uh, so the, we're working with the National Weather Service, and they're concerned that this storm down by Sweetwater is right on a boundary. And this may enhance the chances for the tornado with the Sweetwater circulation, just literally a couple miles southwest. I'm going to toggle on and off. Where there's Jeremy Carter. He's at the intersection of 152 and Highway 30. That's Sweetwater. Okay. The area of circulation is just going to be just 
almost now a mile, just a mile west of that intersection. That's where most of the gate to gate shear is right now. So that area of circulation is going to be coming right over Jeremy's head here in about in less than about a minute. It's probably right there. Yeah, we're going to have to watch this stream very closely. But when we say that this storm is interacting with a boundary, basically, look at it like a mini front where you have air and wind kind of coming in different direction. Storms that can get on a boundary can do all sorts of wild things. And so we're going to have to watch this right here. But uh, this is, this is going to probably be the most concerning part of the storm right now. And it is going to be for this sweet water storm that is going to be uh, just, uh, as, as we just mentioned from Jonathan, they're about a mile away. That circulation, that velocity is very, very impressive. When you see the red and the greens up against each other, that means that you basically have the winds just making that, that circulation movement. And that's going to lead to the threat for tornadoes to stay very high there. So we're looking at gate gate velocity there just north of Sweetwater approaching 95, 100 miles per hour in that range right now. So uh, let Jeremy know, by the way, let Jeremy know that the tornado risk may be increasing with that storm that he is on right now. And uh, we, have, we have crews back here that are communicating with our chasers because, of course, their safety is our number one concern. Uh, we don't want to put anyone in a situation that may get them, uh, may get them uh, in some serious danger. So it uh, looks like Jeremy is now moving out of the circulation, which is very smart. But we're still going to keep his picture up. Again, this is going to be for this part of the storm. And now it looks like the tornado threat increasing with this part of the storm just north of Sweetwater as it continues to move up to the northeast at about 35 miles per hour. Again, moving up to the northeast at about 35 miles per hour. So we're really just going to, we're going to have to just call out a lot of these communities uh, over and over again. But Dempsey, Rose Hill, Grimes, you're all on the path of this. Dempsey at 939, Rose Hill at 947. These are going to be communities northeast of the town of Sweetwater in western Oklahoma. And as you approach Route 283 here, here's another area of rotation. This is going to be that initial circulation that we are tracking as it moved over Dempsey. This is now showing signs of basically getting pretty close to Cheyenne. Cheyenne, you're going into your tornado shelter right now, and you're getting away from those windows because you can see the inflow coming in with this storm. And so once again, when you see these, these what looks like a sea, just uh, west of Cheyenne, and then one right here. These are going to be inflow notches where the winds are rushing into the storm, and it's going to continue to increase that damaging, uh, that damaging wind threat and the potential for this storm to try to produce a tornado. The tornado threat will continue until around midnight. That's when the tornado watch will expire. But wow, uh, Jonathan, I mean, as we mentioned earlier, two, three tornado warnings, all within one warning. That's a serious situation. I haven't seen something like this in a very long time. Yeah, and, and what's, you know, during the day when our, our chasers are right there, and during the day, the storm is lit up, and we're talking to them, and if they see it on the ground, boom, we bring up their video, you can see it. Now we're really limited uh, with the lightning, with it being backlit, and also these are not going to be the tornadoes that are going to be rain-free. These are probably going to be embedded, wrapped up in the circulation. These tornadoes are going to be extremely hard to see. That's why we have to, if you're in the path of these, you have to ride it out. Take your tornado action plan. Whatever that is for you and your family. We don't know what's best for your family. You know what's best for your family. The plan that you've put in place up to today, that's what you're doing right now. And you may have to execute that tornado plan for a while until both these areas of circulation uh, move out of the area. Again, this is going to be north of I-40, uh, tracking the northeast. Speeds have gone up now. Yeah, 30, 35 miles an hour. Yeah, so that's going to push it into town a little bit, uh, a little bit faster. And, and certainly, uh, while we're also tracking the tornado potential, we also cannot forget about the flash flood potential that we have with this as well. So there's going to be a lot of rain, at least up to three inches of rain coming down with this storm. Uh, I want to look at Chance. If we can go, uh, I want to bring up Chance Cold Iron's image because he appears to be looking at a part of the storm that every now and then I can get some interesting looking features out of this. So here's the rain coming down right here. Windmills are going to be right here with those red flashing lights and then it looks like a little bit of lowering associated with that storm. So this tornado warning continues not only are we tracking many areas of circulation within this? We're also looking out for half dollar of the golf ball size hail with these storms moving in. So, Chance Cold Iron currently near Dempsey, uh, Dempsey, Oklahoma. That's going to be northeast of Sweetwater. But watching his image right now, every now and then we can appear with 
it looks to be some lowerings associated with the storm system as it continues to move up to the northeast. So the tornado threat continues. Again, the tornado threat continues with uh, for basically northern parts of Beckham and Roger Mills County. Beckham and Roger Mills County with this storm, and uh, it looks like Jonathan that velocity is now tightening up just west of Sweetwater. Just west of Sweetwater. Well, uh, the one near Sweetwater is a little bit stronger, and I think the actual couplet. Um, it were originated back to the southwest of Sweetwater. Take a look at Frist Alert Doppler 3D. You can see the area circulation a little bit tighter, better gate to gate. Now about, in, I, I think it's now more to the northeast of Sweetwater. So I know we're showing you a, a, a lot of these colors. Uh, we have, you know, the greens are moving towards the radar. The reds are moving away from the radar. That is a lot of gate to gate shear. There's Jeremy Carter. I'm going to toggle back and forth so you can see where he's at. He's at Highway 152, right where 152 makes the bend. This is going to be to the east of Sweetwater. Jeremy Carter, we're looking at your stream right now. You're, you're just ahead of the storm, about four miles east of Sweetwater. What can you see right now? Man, to me, Jonathan, the lowering looks definitely a lot more impressive than it did. I'm just trying to stay ahead of it and watch her close. But if you can see in the lightning, you can see a really nice walk lab. I'm just going to watch it, Jonathan. And, um, man, if I see anything, I'll let you know. I'm going to stay with it. Okay, so it's backlit. Jeremy, we're watching your stream. We're going to keep it up. We're going to kind of narrate this for everybody. So I assume, by the way the road is, Highway 152, you're looking to the northwest, aren't you? Yes. Okay. So we see on the right-hand side of your stream, there's the bowl. There's the wall cloud. Uh, do you have any funnels at all with it? Can you see it when it's backlit? Are there any appendages coming down? Or is it, is it pretty laminar or flat on the bottom? I can't see anything that would resemble a funnel to me. Um, I'm looking pretty hard, too, but it, it's pretty lit up. I've got a clear shot of the base. But when it I don't comes, see anything that would uh, make me think it's got a tornado at this point. Okay, so you can see clear under the wall cloud. I know it's really hard to do at night. I've been there. I've chased at night. It's hard to do. Can, on, can you see the rotation at all? You know, I can see the lowering, what appears to be a walk lab. But if it was rotating, you know, as I'm getting the flashes of lights, I can't make out any, so any really, movement. Okay. Any clouds. So hard to see, hard to see, hard to see the rotation with this storm, but definite wall cloud now a couple miles northeast of Sweetwater. Jeremy Carter stream. He's four miles east of Sweetwater on Highway 152, where 152 makes the jog back to the south. That's where he is. We have eyes on the storm right now. Yeah, and new information now coming in. We have now changed the speed of this tornado warning. So both areas of circulation are now slowing down to 20 miles per hour. Earlier, they were at 35 miles per hour, now slowing down to 20 miles per hour. But you can see right here that hook associated with this storm right along Route 30. And this is what happens with these storms is that they go through cycle phases where they'll pick up speed and they'll slow down. They're going to pick up speed and slow down. Now, sometimes when you see them beginning to slow down, it's because they're beginning to strengthen. They're beginning to try to fight against whatever, uh, whatever's preventing it or whatever's trying to push it up to the northeast. So when they slow down, they begin to turn a little bit more to the right. And that's going to be a concern that we have because when it starts to make more of this move rather than this move, that means it's getting stronger and the potential for it to produce a tornado will continue to increase. So we can here look at Jeremy Carter's stream. And again, he has that lowering associated with it. Uh, certainly that wall cloud and what is going to be probably the most uh, dangerous part of this entire storm. And as we watch it closely, and every time we see the lightning flashes, you can see that lowering associated with it. And we are very familiar here in Oklahoma with just how fast tornadoes can quickly spin up. Sometimes you can do it in a matter of seconds. Sometimes it takes a couple of minutes, but still watching this right here, this lowering wind farms in the distance. That's what you see all those uh, when all those red flashing lights are. That means that this is a place of employment for someone. One. For many people, when you see these wind farms, these are being attended to. There are going to be people out there. So uh, this is a, still a very serious situation. And there's probably a lot more people in the path of this storm than you may think because we know just uh, not only is this going to be an area that has wind farms, there's also going to be many oil rigs that are out across western Oklahoma as well as natural, gra uh, natural gas rigs. So we're watching this right here, this rotation, brand new storm track with the updated 
speed of this storm. And as we look over at First Alert Doppler 3D, we'll put it now in the Rose Hill at 10:02 and Cheyenne at 10:21. Wow! Now that that was an uptick. That was an uptick in the uh, in the velocity. And that's pretty strong right there, Jonathan. That is very, very strong. I want to bring Buck into this conversation right now. Mr. King, hey, Buck, uh, new radar data coming in right now shows that this system may be, uh, may be continuing to strengthen. Where are you and what are you seeing? I'm looking at the uh, same uh, rotation that Jeremy is. He's on the other side of it, I believe. So I'm looking southwest, and it's getting lower to the ground. Um, I don't see anything all the way to the ground yet, but it definitely has a lot more structure right now than it did a while ago. Yeah, right, yeah, and uh, we, we we're glad that you said you know a lot more structure because what we're noticing with the radar is that it's starting to tighten up. Let's put up, let's keep this image up, but I also want to look at first alert Doppler 3D because when we look at the gate to gate shear that is within this storm, it is over 100 miles per hour still, and that's what first alert Doppler 3D is telling us. So 102 mile per hour gate to gate shear velocity, 62 miles per hour in that section that we're sampling right there, but. That's very strong. I mean, when you're getting that type of uh, wind, basically you have winds that are uh, move about 50 miles per hour in both directions. So the gate-to-gate -gate shear is very strong. Certainly one of the stronger, uh, stronger velocity tracks and images that we have seen throughout the evening. So that is going to be for the storm that is going to be just north of. Sweetwater, Jonathan, let's check in with the one just west of Cheyenne and see how that's looking because this storm's getting pretty close to Cheyenne. I want to make sure people are getting ready to go into their tornado shelter uh, in Cheyenne. So there you go. Let's, let's flip here so I, can, uh, so I can point over on First Alert Doppler 3D. But again, we're now looking at just a few miles now southwest of Cheyenne. Again, a few miles just southwest of Cheyenne. This is moving in. Jonathan, how far away are we now from Cheyenne with this area of rotation? I, I can't imagine we're that far away. No, only about four miles away from, uh, from the center of, of circulation crossing right over Route 283 and into the town of Cheyenne. So Cheyenne, you're going into your tornado shelter right now. Storm moving up to the northeast at about 20, 20 miles per hour, I do believe. Yeah, 20 miles per hour means that it's going to be in the town uh, within the next five the 10 minutes here as it continues to move up to the northeast. We're hoping that it can stay just, uh, you know, outside of town. We know how these towns are structured. You go one or two miles outside of the community, outside the town limits, and you're back over some rural land, and that's where we want to keep this. But then if it stays just north of Cheyenne, it's going to put Strong City into play here. So Cheyenne, 951 is currently about 940. Strong City at 1007. That's going to be for circulation number one with this storm system as it moves up to the northeast. Again, as it moves up to the northeast. And I know that these storms at this time of the night can certainly pack quite a bit of punch. And uh, even looking at a, a three dimensional mode here of this storm, these storms are still going to be up around 40,000 feet tall. So those are very tall storms. And the taller they are, the stronger they're going to be. So when you're up, uh, seeing storms up around 40,000 feet high, even about 45,000 feet, that is certainly going to be very significant and basically kind of just telling us exactly what we know here in Oklahoma and that these storms are still quite severe. So circulation number one of two moving up to the northeast. What you're seeing there on the left-hand side, that's going to be coming in from uh, from Jeremy Carter, and we still see that lowering associated with the storm. Again, with the lowering associated with the storm. So uh, we, we we continue with this tornado warning, and tornado warning will go until 10 o'clock here. And so about 10 o'clock, it is currently 9:40. Again, it is currently 9:40. Jeremy Carter, want to bring you in right now, Jeremy? What are you seeing from where you are? No, I'm just still watching this wall cloud. I. I uh... I'm seeing some little things hanging down. It, it's still pretty low, but I, I can't see anything that would appear to be a funnel at this point. Back uh, to you. All right, Jeremy. We'll stick on it because we know that while it may not appear to be a funnel at this point, tornadoes can quickly, quickly form out here. And so we're still going to treat this as a very serious situation. So here is circulation number one, Rose Hill. This is going to stay north of you, but Rose Hill and Dempsey, you're not in the clear yet because circulation number two down near Sweetwater is going to move right on over. So uh, again, we've, there's a reason why this tornado warning is as large as it is, and they're going to continue this tornado warning until 10 o'clock. Again, until 10 o'clock. So let's go over to reflectivity here and, uh, and and look at exactly where the hail cores are going to be located. Here's going to be one hail core just west of Cheyenne. Cheyenne, we're probably going to be we'll get clipped. 
with this hail core. Here is going to be the uh, this what we call the tail and Charlie part of the storm. This is going to be the part of the storm that basically is going to be on the southernmost end uh, 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 section of the storm. And these are the ones that can sometimes be the strongest because there's nothing that's obstructing it. You see the hail cores within this. This is going to be one hail core just north of Sweetwater moving over Highway 30. And I expect that those hailstones are going to be getting pretty large here. Uh, we're probably going to be looking at it at least uh, hailstones that are going to be approaching higher in coin variety, so probably half dollars, if not a little bit larger, but still two hail cores within this storm. Sweetwater and then north of Dempsey. Jonathan, as we look at the velocity, what's the latest what's the latest velocity image looking like for the Sweetwater storm? Uh, we're kind of in between samples right now. We'll give it a second for the radar to spin around to get a, a fresh plot. Uh, but again, we still have two well-defined areas of circulation. The number one coming into Cheyenne. So we had two areas. Number one is up near Cheyenne. Number two now between Sweetwater, between Sweetwater and Dempsey. So again, two areas. Let's go ahead and I'll bring up the, the uh, velocity here. And there it is. Looks like the one near Sweetwater has come down a little bit. It's still gate to gate, but it's not as intense. And then the other one, so this we'll call this two. That was one near Sweetwater. The first one, now a couple miles southwest of Cheyenne, higher speeds per se, uh, but broader area of rotation. So right now, these are not the best velocities we've seen so far tonight. We've, I think we've already seen that, but these could easily cycle because it's, a, a, again, a, a, a twin supercells connected. We can see it really good, uh, the structure inside the storm over on First Lord Doppler Max. We have that over on um, route uh, on the router on number six. We'll pull that up here in a minute, but we can have a really good three-dimensional scan. You can see the two hill cores and the two the bolts of the storms, and you can eventually see uh, where there is a circulation are going to be kind of trailing back into the updrafts. Yeah, and uh, we're getting into the time of evening now, Jonathan, as we mentioned it. Eventually, eventually we have to watch these storms weaken. And it takes at least tracking the storms for about 20, 30 minutes to get a, a, a better understanding as to what is the new, uh, the new path of the storms and what's the trend with these storms. So if they are coming down, we're going to have to continue to watch it pretty closely and see just how bright these colors are side by side. But if we have already reached the pinnacle of this tornado potential here, then we're now beginning to watch uh, maybe it's starting to slowly, slowly go down. But still, this tornado watch, which was issued earlier this afternoon, it continues for western Oklahoma until about midnight. So we still have about two hours and 15 minutes, plus or minus a few minutes there, of this tornado warning or this tornado watch still being in effect. Again, still being in effect. So uh, we continue. We continue watching these areas of circulation. Watching these areas of circulation embedded within this. And as of right now, as of right now, we have at least one area south of Dempsey, another area south of Cheyenne. Although this is becoming a little bit more broad. What does that mean? That means that the circulation is going to be rather wide. You want to see circulation very tight. In order for there to be a tornado, so might be a little bit of good news coming out of the situation right now, but we're still going to have to watch it uh, and see just what happens with the trend. Not just watching what one radar scan will do, but what the trend is over the next 20 to 30 minutes. But as we continue putting a storm track on this up to the northeast at about 20 miles per hour, this will put the second circulation in the Cheyenne. So Cheyenne, keep that in mind. If circulation number one goes just west of you, you're not in the clear. You're going to get the second one that's going to move right on over. And not only that, this is going to come with some slightly larger hailstones. And the first one, already looking right now at the potential for there to be hailstones that right now are radar sampling that could be up around half dollars to golf ball size hail. So we're still going to be uh, bouncing back and forth on that variety of basically uh, coin and sporting ball size hailstones. Uh, but again, we're not talking about dimes and penny size hail. We're talking about hailstones that are much larger. This picture right here coming in from Jeremy Carter and watching what the lightning shows us every time uh, every time it lights up the sky. Fortunately, we see uh, it looks like a house light on there, which means that power is not out. Uh, in this part of the state, which is good because sometimes when you get these tornadoes, as they sweep right on through, they knock down power lines. So power is still on. We can see lights in the distance there, and we're still looking at this lightning and, uh, and every now and then looking for that lowering associated with this. But this tornado warning continues for another uh, 15 minutes or so. Another 15 minutes or so. Jeremy Carter 
Looking at his current placement right now, he is going to be just outside the city of Sweetwater. So just looking right outside the city of Sweetwater, Oklahoma. Jeremy, we have you on the phone right now. Jeremy, uh, how tight is this uh, is this wall cloud associated with the storm looking now? I, I tell you what, Damon, I'm looking back to my north, maybe northeast, and I think it's tightened up a little bit. Um, it's it's still hard to make make it out, but I think the lightning is seeming to pick up in intensity a little bit. And um, I'm just trying to get my eyes on it where I can give you guys a solid report if it's anything. Back at you. All right, Jeremy. Well, we're going to continue to watch it pretty closely. We're going to stay on this stream, but also continue to, to have First Alert Doppler 3D up because. As Jeremy just mentioned, he said it looks like the circulation may be trying to tighten up, and that's exactly what First Alert Doppler 3D is now showing us. You see that red and that, that green, they're right next to each other. That's a very tight couplet, and when you see that, that means that the, the shear is still strong enough. You know, we mentioned earlier, you can't just look at one radar scan, but you have to look at rather the trend, and the trend continues to show a very strong a very strong uh, uh, velocity couplet there across western Oklahoma where the tornado threat will continue. So once again, this tornado warning continues until 10 o'clock. It is currently 947, 947. And, uh, and Jonathan, you know, we've been, we've been talking a lot about when will this trend come down? When will the tornado threat come down? But as of right now, it is still very much there. And you can see uh, with all of our number of chasers that are basically uh, in, in each inflow area, each one of them reporting, they're still lowering with this. And so this tornado threat is not going to quickly end at 10 o'clock. I expect that it's probably going to transition well after that. We'll get your mic on. There you go. We had to do a battery change there. But, uh, but Jonathan, you know, we know how out here a lot of times this tornado threat, even after, you know, the sun sets, even after... Uh, you know, we, we think that the tornado risk has come down. Sometimes it can quickly pick back up. So continuing to watch this lowering from Jeremy Carter, uh, first alert Doppler 3D shows one hail core just west of Cheyenne. That is going to be just west of Cheyenne there. Uh, another hail core now going over Dempsey, Rose Hill, Grimes, Strong City. You are still going to be in the path of this storm. And once again, you're going into your tornado shelter. Or I know not everyone has a tornado shelter, but you at least want to be in the innermost room of your house away from windows. That, that has never changed, and that will still be one of the, the best things that you can do is, again, being away from, uh, from any windows as these storms are moving in. Jonathan, the hail core is still coming up from time to time within the storm. And as, uh, as Jeremy mentioned, uh, you know, it looks like he's still seeing that lowering, and the velocity within this is still quite impressive. So here's a question I have for you, Damon. Mm -hmm. What's the chance that this makes it all the way to Oklahoma City? Tell everyone right now. What the tornado risk for Oklahoma City is, because I know a lot of people are watching this. We're really focused on these storms; they're way out there. But on the, on the current storm track, you know, here in Oklahoma City right now, can we can we go to bed? Do we have to worry about this? You know, I would say in Oklahoma City, I think you're just fine. You know, with, with these storms, we're probably moving up to the northeast. At least this cluster of storms. Now, what a lot of the high resolution models have been showing us later tonight is that we're going to see storms develop out near Amarillo. And then those are going to swing up into western and eventually northwestern Oklahoma, and we're still going to get clipped here across the metro. So uh, the threat for tornadoes across Oklahoma City is, is pretty low. It's pretty low. It's not zero, but it is pretty low. Uh, we want everyone to know that. So you can go to bed tonight and sleep peacefully. But the storms, as they, as they move more into the central parts of the state, I expect that they're probably going to stay more in the north central Oklahoma and northwestern Oklahoma, at least these storms. Now, at about 4 and 5 a.m., I still expect that we're probably going to see some storms moving in. Hey, let's switch, uh, let's switch sources here. Put uh, velocity and put radar, first alert, Doppler 3D behind me, and then we'll put uh, Jeremy's picture up on the left-hand side. But this is going to be at least uh, circulation now continues. So Sweetwater, Sweetwater, we mentioned earlier that uh, the system was going to move right on over. Sweetwater, you can now come out of your tornado shelter if you happen to go into your shelter. So again, things are looking and improving and looking much better. And Sweetwater, uh, let's see what this latest report is now coming in. We're just now getting a new report coming in, so we're going to wait for our, uh, our system to update. But as I look well out to the west, I see storms now developing out near Amarillo. So uh, the conditions are still there for there to be at least uh, another cluster and line of storms to come in. So the latest update right now comes in, shows that the tornado warning continues until 10 o'clock, and we're still looking for two areas of circulation. 
The speed of the storms has not changed at all. It still continues at 15 miles per hour. So Cheyenne, strong city, you're headed into your tornado shelter right now. Here's going to be the other area of rotation, Rose Hill, Berlin. I'm going to be headed into my tornado shelter if I were out there right now. Sweetwater, things are looking much better as now the circulation is going to be to the east-northeast. You can see quite a bit of lightning within this storm. And every time we see the lightning flash there in Jeremy Carter stream, we can see and I get an idea as a structure. But you can see that lowering still associated with this storm. And if you're just now joining us, we did have a very large tornado just north of Sayre a couple hours ago. So this atmosphere is still very dangerous. It is still very turbulent and still uh, very much supportive of producing a tornado. And at this time of the night, the pictures, we either have to look for lightning flashes or we have to look within the circulation right here. And that's exactly what we're seeing west of Rose Hill, south of Dempsey. And it is going to be this spot right here that uh, continues to be quite dangerous and still supportive of keeping this tornado warning alive and well. The hail core within this storm still shows damaging hail up around ping pong ball size hail and, uh, and uh, even a little bit larger at times approaching golf ball size hail. These storms are still quite tall. We're still getting samples of these storms that are still up in the 40,000 a uh, 40,000 foot range. So when you have storms that are in excess of 40,000 feet, that is going to be as going to continue. So uh, new information now coming in. It looks like the trend, at least for the time being, is that this might be weakening a little bit. So uh, we'll have to see what happens with this tornado warning. But as we have seen this evening, is that even if this tornado warning expires at 10 o'clock, the threat is still there. This tornado watch continues until midnight. So. This might go through a phase where it's weakening. It might not be as, uh, as strong as it was even 20 or 30 minutes ago, but doesn't mean that these storms cannot still ramp back up. So uh, we're still in a what we would call a, a, uh, a short term forecasting trend here where we're looking at the next 30 minutes, next hour, next two hours. Again, the tornado watch continues until 2 o'clock, but right now that circulation is just out of Chi is just north of Cheyenne. That is going to be circulation number one. We're still going to have that second area that's going to be down north of Sweetwater. And Jonathan, as I look over here at my radar right now, I'm seeing a hail core spike just northwest of more of more wood, southwest of Leedy. And right now we're getting uh, I'm getting some pretty large hailstones possibly being sampled within this. They might be getting up near two inches close to lime size. So this is going to be a dangerous hail core. And I imagine right now, as strong as these storms are, this hail core is going to move. If not right over Leedy, pretty close to Leedy, but we're going to have to watch and, and see what happens with this uh, with this hail core. Maybe it might try to move a little bit more north and make its way just west of Leedy, but uh, the hail within this storm is getting even larger now, and uh, and that's going to be another issue that we have to watch pretty closely with this storm system, as the instability is still quite high even at this time of the night. So we can we can pinpoint the hail cores within this this hail core, which is going to be quite large up near Lime Size, is going to be in Leedy at 10:03. It's currently 9:54. That's nine minutes from now. Camargo at about 9:36. So wherever you see pink shadings on this, that's going to be where the hail core is, and that's where it's likely going to be the largest. So yeah, this is going to be uh, some damaging hail hail big enough to do. Damage to your windows, certainly damage to your cars. Here's going to be another hail core just west of Cheyenne. Then here's going to be another hail core just going over Dempsey. So while we do have the areas of rotation, Jonathan, it looks like at least it's trying to become more broad. When we see that, that's a good sign. But still, this right here, this right here still bears watching in between Cheyenne and Strong City. Yeah, again, there's some gate to gate shear. Um, we like. When, the, when we talk about gate to gate shear, it's winds right next to each other, inbounds and outbounds. And when that gate to gate shear, that we look for the difference in the wind speeds. That is the circulation. That's that's the tornado. So again, the greens are moving towards the radar. The reds are moving away. Our gate to gate shear. That's what I'm talking about. See those pixels are right next to each other. That's the gate to gate shear. What does that mean? That's the area of circulation that we're looking at. Notice that there are just a couple pixels. Um, the bright green that you see right there, north of Cheyenne, if we had a bunch of bright greens and a bunch of bright reds, we would consider that an area of tight circulation. That, that right there is gate to gate, uh, but there's not a lot of gate to gate shear with that storm right there. And that's going to be now 
just to the north of Cheyenne, about right across Highway 283. So that's that first area of circulation that we were watching. When it comes to reference where our storm chasers are at, Chance Cold Iron, he is on Highway 283 at the intersection of 47, just to the northeast in Cheyenne right there. So he's kind of on circulation number one. He's just ahead, ahead of that hail core. Further back to the southwest, again, we can look at uh, where our chasers are at. Uh, Jeremy Carter on the tail end of the storm. He's going to be on Highway, I think that's Highway 6. He's on the southern flank looking to the north, and then in the middle is Mr. King. So again, uh, this, these areas of circulation that we've been watching this evening and the tornado warnings we've been watching this evening, uh, we have our chasers are on it. And again, when we look at the broad view right now, uh, I, I don't, I don't like, I don't, I'm not downplaying it, but I'm just going to be transparent with you. And we're reading this in real time. So I'm analyzing the data as you're seeing it in real time. And from what I can tell, the gate to gate, the couplets, the areas that would be uh, the, the tornadoes, they have really loosened and become broad. What I'm seeing right now is that they've come down. Could there be a tornado in there? Yes. Yeah, that, that's, that's why during a thunderstorm warning, we also take our tornado precautions. Yeah, and especially this time of the night there, Jonathan, you know, what we're doing right now is we're having to analyze this live on air. So with each new radar scan that comes in, we have to look at what is it telling us. And, uh, and sometimes it's not black and white. Sometimes it's a shade of gray. We have to kind of analyze what each of these uh, pixels means right here. But this is a new severe thunderstorm warning. So more than likely what this means is that this tornado warning is going to expire on schedule at 10 o'clock. They're going to replace it with a severe thunderstorm warning that will be for Beckham, Custer, Dewey, Ellis, Roger Mills County until 1045. And this is going to be for hailstones that are still going to be quite large. Ping pong ball up to golf ball size hail with this storm system as it continues to move up. So we're going to see those embedded hail cores within this. That is hail that's large enough to do damage. Again, we're talking about sporting ball size hail. And you see that hail core right here just near Cheyenne. Here's going to be another hail core near Dempsey. I believe now we're probably going to have this tornado warning expire. We're going to have a, a new warning. So yes, so the tornado warning has now expired for Beckham and Roger Mills County. So the tornado warning has expired for Beckham and Roger Mills County. What that means right now, it is 959. It is 959 on this Thursday night. We no longer have any tornado warnings in the state. However, we still have this tornado watch in effect until midnight. And just like we saw with the Sayer tornado, the tornado warning expired. We went through a lull of about 10, 15 minutes. And then the warning, and then we had new warnings issued. So certainly the threat is still there. And what I'm now noticing out near Amarillo as another line of storms. This is now in the early development stage. This is going to swing in this direction. What that means is that we are not done with the severe weather threat at all across Oklahoma. Brand new information coming in. We're going to have an update. KOCO 5 News at 10 o'clock starts right now. You're watching KOCO.